Hey, what's up? Jason here from Community3D.College. Today we're going to talk about mind reading. Can you tell me where my love life's going? Nowhere. Now, of course, not literal mind reading. We're not reading anybody's actual thoughts. Instead, what we want to do, and this applies to all game developers, is read the mind of our game designers. And when I say that, I mean that we need to know what it is that they want, even when they're not able to really clearly communicate it. And we also need to predict the future. We need to know what they're going to want based on the kind of things that we see them doing and the kind of things that we see them asking for. So if a designer is asking for a specific feature, maybe it's a, um, they want to make a character just run faster. Something really simple, right? They have maybe three characters. And they're like, hey, we want this character to run faster. Make it so this character runs faster. Well, the obvious and right thing to do there is say no I'm not gonna do that instead what I'm gonna do is allow you to customize the speed of the characters so then you can go in and adjust it you know as you need to get it perfect I don't want to go in there and change the speed have them play it again change the speed again have them play it again and keep going until it's right and then they decide they want something different later they want to totally change it again and I gotta do it again no instead we'll make it available to them as just a field that they can modify somewhere in the inspector ideally and just keep it keep it as much in their hands as possible and the same thing could happen for like uh, weapons you know, maybe they want to adjust the damage of weapons all of these things if they're hard-coded you're already making a big mistake but if they're not customizable and they're not easily customizable by the designers then you're making it harder on yourself you're kind of adding more work to your own your own workload I guess and you're making it harder for design to test out ideas and adjust as, as they go and kind of make the game as good as possible but it's not just simple customizations like that it's also true when it comes to just big systems so if I've got a system um, in fact I can just think back to a real one that I've done semi recently where I've got uh, the ability to counter spell spells in a game now I could just have a you know the request is hey we want to be able to counter spell a spell so this wizard enemy is casting on me I want to be able to have a counter pop up I cast it and that thing is countered we could code it like that so we could go in and set it up so that we look hey is this guy casting a spell if he is allow this counter to happen and hit it that that works and it would meet that basic like simple requirement but if you think it through a little bit longer and you start predicting kind of what other kinds of things are similar to this that my designers might want to do or definitely will want to do in the future uh, with that one some some simple stuff pops up like maybe it's not a spell maybe it's a uh, bow attack maybe we're getting shot at by an arrow and I want to be able to stop that like I want to be able to block it or dodge out of the way or something do I want to code a counter system and a block system? Oh, or maybe there's another another attack type where the guy's swinging a giant you know, wooden club and I want to be able to block wooden clubs. Do I build then a separate, hey, here's how you block wooden clubs. It's a whole separate system. Instead, what I like to do and what I think everybody should do is start to think through all of these possibilities and then once you have an idea of what they are and kind of the way that you would handle them, then present that to the designers and just ask them, say, hey, well, if I give you this, do you think you would use it to block attacks or something? Or would you use it to reflect back an arrow or something like that? And if they say yes you know, to any of these things, then you know that you're kind of on the right path and you can design this system so that it works for all of these cases and not just build it for a very specific thing that's going to change later. This will help because one, your designers will be happier. They'll be able to do more. They'll have more functionality available and more flexibility. But you'll also not have to go back in and change this. And you won't end up with six different ways to accomplish nearly the same thing. You don't end up with the copy-paste mess that you that you get, you know, if you go by 
adding these things one after the other after the other. Now, sometimes when you're working with designers, they'll also just, uh, in fact, a lot of the time, they'll write out a full doc of what they want, what the problem is, what their ideal solution is, and their recommendation on how to implement it. Now, not everybody does that. Some designers just don't even have an idea of how, how they think that should be implemented. And usually they're, they're kind of right, but sometimes, sometimes, very rare times, they'll have really good ideas for how they want to implement it. But most of the time, it's a bit off. They're, they're usually thinking very specific to that one type of thing. So um, I wish I had a good example for this. I probably do somewhere back in the back of my brain, but I can't come up with one right now. But if, if you see your designers offering a system to you, you know, it's like, hey, I think it should work like this. Don't just instantly assume that that's the best way. What you want to do is, again, just run through that process of thinking, what else are they going to do with this? How else could this be used in the game to expand things out or to allow them to do other things? And how could this tie into future functionality? Can it tie into future functionality? If it can, try to redesign the system a bit and fix that design up as much as you can just to make it flexible and just make it work. And then again, present it to the designers and just have them look at it because even though I, I like to read minds and predict what they're going to do or what they're thinking, Sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes I will come up with this whole design for something, present it to them, and they'll be like, you know, we're not actually going to do any of that. We're only going to do this one little thing, so then I'll totally revise it and simplify down and maybe not even add in a new system. Maybe it's a, a much smaller thing than that. So it's always good to just really keep that communication back and forth. Um, again, try to read their mind as much as possible, but then verify, validate, and then build the best thing. Anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to say about this. I think it's a very interesting thing. It's um, something that a lot of programmers don't tend to do. They tend to just take that spec and run with it. But if you do that back and forth communication and do that guessing, mind reading, predicting, whatever you want to call it, I think you, you'll see big benefits. I see them all the time and I love it. So highly recommend it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the alert button. Uh, share with all your friends. Keep watching all my videos. Love it. Anyway, thanks again. Bye.